Welcome to Learning Styles. I'm glad you're here. Uh, my name is Brad Forbes and um, I work at Advent Source. And before I started working at Advent Source, I didn't know anything about learning styles. Um, but I did marry an educator, which helped with that quite a bit. And then I started working with children's ministries. And um, I was, my eyes were open to a whole new world um, that helps me not only, I'm a primary Sabbath school teacher, so it helps me in primary, but it helps me in my relationships with other people. It helps me at work, it, hel it, helps, it has helped me become a better learner myself. And so I'm excited to be able to go through a little process with you here where you can do some discovery too. So um, as we get started here, let's just have a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that we can be here this afternoon. And uh, Lord, one of the great things about your creation is that you made us all different. We're all in your image and we're all different. And please be with us now as we talk about those differences and how that they are strengths uh, when we work together. Um, ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to stand back here so you can follow the directions. So, follow the directions. Stand up if you like small group activities. If you like small group activities. Okay, you can sit down. Okay, so did everyone stand up? Everyone likes small group activities? Stand up if you don't like small group activities. All right, everyone stood up, so here's the next one. Stand up if you like debates, if you like to debate things. Okay, sit down. Stand up if you do not like debates. All right, you can sit down. Okay, stand up if you like coded activities or puzzles. All right, you can sit down. Oh, everyone stood up, I think, so. Stand up if you like a regular routine. So you go ahead and sit down. Stand up if you like changes in routine. Oh, <laughs> okay, all right, go ahead and sit down. Okay, so. People just like you come to my Sabbath school class every week, right? And they come to your Sabbath school class. Some of them like doing things in groups. Others would rather do them alone. Some of them love it when you give them a little crossword or some sort of little thing to figure out. And others are like, you know, that, okay. Yeah, boring, like boring. I mean, you know, it's, what's bad is when they just say it. <laughs> they don't, don't just think it. So they're all coming to our Sabbath school uh, uh, class. And so understanding that and valuing that and then learning, so what are we going to do to make your Sabbath school, and I would say even broader, your adventure club, um, anything that, anywhere where you're trying to teach kids or adults be something where uh, where everyone can learn something is really really important one of the reasons is important for us as teachers to understand that so we're going to learn about our own selves but one of the reasons that it's important for us as teachers is that we tend to teach the way we learn because that's the, yeah, that's the way that we should do it. And so the kids that I like in my Sabbath school oftentimes learn the way that I do because when I tell them how to do things, they're like, yes, this is so exciting, Mr. Brad. Okay. Um, and I'm like, oh, I love you. And so then I spend all my attention there. Okay. And, and the other kids are like, you know, they're somewhere else. Um, so as teachers, we need to understand that kids, everyone learns in, in a lot of different ways. And 
we want to value that, not to plug them in and say, oh, well, they're this type of leader or this, but to say, so they're going to take in things differently. So I need to be able to present this same concept in a lot of different ways. And at the end of this, we're going to do a little practice on that. So, so but before we get started here, where you're going to take a little, spend a little time to find out what your dominant learning style is, I want to talk to you about... Um, about what, in the big, big picture, we're not trying to pigeonhole anything, but in the big, big picture, um, everyone looks at things on a continuum, okay? This isn't a here or there, but when we look at how we perceive things, how we see things, how we look at, at the world, some people will want to experience things, okay? They want to touch it, to feel it, or they'll just know. I mean, do you know people that just say, well, I just knew what to do? You know, which is baffling to me. But, um, but, okay, but I'm not there. I'm somewhere further down on the continuum here. So at the complete other end of the continuum is people who are looking for, what's the concept? They want to think about it, okay? Um, they're, they're, not that they're intelligent, okay, they're relying on their, in, uh, their intellect, okay? Um, so I, I tell people, so uh, my wife and I are quite ways apart on, on this. Um, and it's not a male-female thing, it's a Brad-Jennifer thing, okay? Um, Jennifer can go into a project, we have a list of things we want to do, and we'll go into a project, and she will just get into it. Well, that's what we're going to do. Okay, well, let's just get started. Like, wait, wait, well, what are you going to do next? Well, I don't know, we'll, we'll do that after we get done with this. Well, that does not work for me, <laughs> okay? It just does not work because I need to know where we're going to end up before I can start, Okay. And when she does projects, so, so we don't do projects together, at least not like that. What she's figured out and what I figured out is if she'll say to me, so I just want you to think about this. This is what they'd like to do. In, a, you know, sometime, just <laughs> think about it, okay? I love that because then I'll be thinking about it, I'll think about it, and I'll get it all planned out, and then she'll have me do the right things. Okay, because she doesn't need to think it all through. She, she has the, the she'll uh, help to convey the feeling. Uh, she'll have that to make sure I paint it the right color or that it's shaped right. But I'm going to make sure that it's structurally sound and that it lasts for a while. Okay, so how we perceive things is a whole continuum. And you're not either here or here. There's this whole range of where you could be. Okay, so the other thing is how do we process things? So some people process much more actively. They want to do it, okay? They'll get their hands in and, and, they'll, and they'll work on it. At the whole other end over here, we have people that are more reflective and observing. They will, um, uh, some people, when they're putting something together, uh, will just dump it all on the floor and start, start working on it. Okay, uh, no one probably in this room would, would do that, but some people someplace else would do that. There, there are other people who will not open the whole box, they will pull out the instructions and they'll read the instructions and be very clear before then they pull out the pieces and figure out what they are. Okay, so that's, that's a processing thing. And we're, again, we're all on the continuum, it's not either or there. So I'm, I'm putting that to you to say we all have our preferred learning style. Not that it's one way that we do it, but there's this whole world out there of how we learn. Um, and I'm going to give you a little four-page document now where I want for you to read the questions and think about the answer that is most like you, okay? Um, now, there isn't any right or wrong. Um, but, there, but we will, we will uh, at the end, um, when you're done with this, we will have you score them out so you'll get a good idea of where you are. And there isn't just one, uh, one thing. You'll find out as you go along that 
you, you'll be probably spread out. But we're, so don't worry about the right or wrong. Don't think, so what would other people think? Read the question and just answer it. Don't overthink it. Okay, don't assess, think, okay, uh, if I answer this, is it going to make me be more analytical? Okay, just let the question flow. Does everyone have a pen? Okay, all right. No, no, you, you can write your name and date. You're going to keep this. I'm not going to get this back. So you can just take your time. Anyone need a little more time? You say, okay, are we ready? Okay. So if your dominant style, if your highest score was a one, stand up. If your highest score was a one, stand up. All right, ones, I'm gonna have you move right here to this row, this row, so you're sitting here in this front row right here, okay? Just bring your bring, Oh, go ahead and bring your stuff because you'll be there the rest of the time. Actually, you can leave it because we're going to spread out here, whatever you're most comfortable with. But we are going to be staying here. Okay? Twos, stand up. Twos. Do I have any twos that are the, that's the highest score? Okay, we don't have any twos. Threes. If your three was your dominant. Three? Three, you stay right where you are because that's where I'm having the threes. And so if you're a four, stand up. Okay, that should be everyone. I'm gonna have you sit up right up here in this front row here. Okay, go ahead and move up here. That's good, <laughs> now that you have a seat. Your twos, twos are right back here. And, and what are you? You're, we're still waiting on you. Now, you're probably a two because everything's got to be perfectly added up. <laughs> no, I just tease, I'm just teasing you. <laughs> okay. So um, while we're getting the last, ad, ad, I want to, I want to uh, point out to you, and this, this, on this sheet right here, you'll see that this is some thoughts. I'm not sure that this is, you know, is research-based as far as I couldn't take you back and say, here's the study. But about 25% of the population falls into the innovative, the, the one style. And um, these, this uh, group that did this study says that it's 25% male, 75% female. This, if you look at this, this is the only one that is heavily female dominated, okay? Everything else is about 50-50. Okay, so 25% of the population, so one in four, that's pretty close to what we have here. We have a pretty small population yeah, here. So, so twos are analytical, okay? About 25% of the population split half and half, we're going to talk a little bit about what some of the attributes are of each of these, okay? The threes we will call common sense learners, okay? They're, they're about 30% uh, percent, uh, of our population, and, and your fellow common sense leaders are probably somewhere else doing something because they looked at this and said, well, what good can knowing my learning style uh, do to me? Anyway, I'm going to go do something that actually makes a difference in my life. Okay, and then fours are our dynamic learners. Uh, about 25, 20 percent of the population, um, they'll be more spontaneous, uh, more active, tend to be more active, tend to be more people oriented. Okay, um, so I'm going to leave you where you are because we're going to do an activity that's going to ask for you to use the strengths of yours. Where did you end up, Miss? <laughs> okay, so let's let's go through and and, and look at uh, at this. So here we are for learning styles. I'm putting together the vertical and the horizontal. So people that are in the top here, the dynamic learners and the imaginative learners are going to be more likely. So ones and fours, more likely 
to be experiencing, sensing, and, and in, intuitive. That you're going to, do, not, not, not to the exclusion of others, but you're going to be more likely to be there. Okay, so then there's some of you right now that are saying, oh, I need to take a picture of this because I need to take this. And these will more likely be our analytical learners. Um, and so for you, I bought, brought a handout of the, um, the rest of the uh, program because some of you couldn't, couldn't care at all. But some of you, it's really important to uh, that you have something that you can write down and take notes. Now, it maybe should be for all of you, so I'm gonna give all of you something to write on. I didn't wanna give this to you earlier because then some of you would have tried to get ahead of me and uh, guess to see what we were going to do because you were so curious, okay? So if you look on the second page uh, there, you'll see uh, what I have here. So imaginative learners, um, and um, uh, let me just say that in, in Sabbath school, um, this group tends to be stifled because we like these people in Sabbath school. These are the little task-oriented people. Uh, they are more, uh, th this is, we're talking about the Bible story. We're doing little crafts and, and things. And these people up here, they're thinking about, so what if, what else could I do? Oh, we could do this and that and the other thing. We're saying, well, you know, just sit down and shut up <laughs> because we've got this work that we've got to get done because there's only five minutes left to go before Sabbath school's over, okay? So, so these people here, we're gonna have this, and then we have this group here. These are the thinking, the intellectual. Um, uh, you know, frankly, uh, if, I, if I were to uh, just think about Seventh-day Adventists, so I'm a second generation Seventh-day Adventist, my dad's a pastor. If I'm thinking about Seventh-day Adventists, we tend to value the, 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 the learners, okay? The people who dig in and the, and the doers. We tend not to, in our church, value the more experiential uh, people, the, art, the, the artists, uh, the musicians. Not that we don't value those people, but as an as a organization, we, don't, we tend not to value that group as much, okay? Um, and then you also get split this way. So the, uh, these imaginative and uh, analytical will observe and they'll be more reflective Whereas these, this group of people here are more active and they're, and they're the doers. You know, what, what are we doing sitting around here? I mean, how many times? We're sitting around just talking about it. Let's go out and do something, okay? Uh, and then the ones over here are like, well, yeah, but we need a, a plan and it needs to be approved by the church board and then we need to make sure we've got insurance. And people are like, whatever, you know, just call us up when you're ready to do something, okay? Um, and that same thing is true in your Sabbath school. You got those same kids. They may not be quite as deeply ingrained, but it is there. If you watch for it, you will see it. Um, so let's just talk real quickly here um, about uh, these learners. So imaginary learners. These people, these are the ones, quadrant runs. They need an opportunity to be creative, okay? They need a warm and friendly atmosphere. Uh, they need to be heard, um, and they would like to also talk, okay? They would just like to, to share. Um, they like small group activities, they like to role play, artistic projects, they like. They do not like time tests or debates. What's the use of that? Um, you know, hurried assignments. These are, these are the kids where at the end of my Sabbath school class, if I have a little art project, their parents eventually come up to the Sabbath school and say, well, you know, we were supposed to meet you down in the lobby. Why aren't you there? And the, and the kid looks at them like, I have not done with my project yet. Well, you know, why would I leave if I wasn't, if I wasn't done? Whereas some of the kids, you know, at this time, they just grab it. They, some of them don't even bother to throw it in the trash. They just leave it on top of the table because they're done with it, okay? So then we're moving down to the quadrant two people. Analytical, uh, they need reliable information and they need time to compare it, to think about it. Okay, don't just plow through. Uh, they're saying, but yeah, but, but you just said, and you're like, well, you know, don't, don't think about that. Now we're doing this. But you just said, and they'll do this at, at a young age. I mean, I've had primary kids, 
you know, eight, eight year olds call me to task over this. Okay, you said this, now why are we doing this? Okay, they like the traditional classroom, doesn't bother them at all to be sitting in rows. Uh, well organized lectures are great. They like to figure things out, Quest, uh, quizzes are great. Um, they, they're the puzzle likers. Um, they don't like to role play or do things with other people. They don't want to do things with other people. Why do they need those other people? They can just do it by themselves, okay? Um, and listening to their, their peers talk, I mean, why, why would they listen to them talk? They, they know the answers, so why would they listen to those, to those other people? And warning to teachers, they really dislike teachers that don't stay on task. Okay, <laughs> um, because they know what's supposed to be next, and they're the people that'll say, uh, Mr. Brad, we're supposed to do this next. Well, who decided that? Well, that's what we did last time, <laughs> um, you, you know. So, then we'll move to common sense. So, these common sense leaders need class to start on time, okay? It doesn't matter whether they're kids or adults, they're there on time, why are you waiting for the late people? Okay, um, and they want to touch things, lots of hands-on learning. They like a chance to try things out. Um, they want to be accepted. Um, they like to figure out without being told. Wait, 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 don't tell me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about it. I know the answer to that. Say, Mr. Brad, don't, don't tell me. I know, I, I know what it is. Well, you know, they, they don't know what it is. They're just thinking about it, okay? <laughs> Defining and solving problems, applying ideas. They do not like memorization. And, uh, and again, no, group work, they, they, this, this lower half, twos and threes, they don't want to work with other people, generally. And um, they, they don't like it when teachers don't get to the point. So why, why did you tell me that story? I mean... And adults sometimes think that too. So, okay, now we're gonna move it to the dynamic learners. Um, they need to be sensory. These people as a group tend to be uh, much more um, uh, visual. Um, they want to take what they learn and do something else. Just learning it is of absolutely no, no value. Um, they, they like to self-express. They want hands-on activities rather than listening. So I'm sorry that we're just talking, but we're getting to the hands-on, so we're gonna work with you on that. Uh, they, they, they're the kids uh, in your Sabbath school class that like to do the drama. Can I be that, you know, I'll have, I'll say, so we're gonna, I need three volunteers. It's always the same three people, you know, yeah, yeah, pick me. There's like, eh. okay. Um, testing things, uh, they, they like putting on the programs, um, and, and uh, they like, they'll tend to be unique, okay? Um, they don't like to be told where to sit. The routine is not only of no value to them, but they don't like the routine. Let's just do something different, okay? Um, and the, um, they don't want to, they don't, really don't like it when you say, okay, uh, we've only got two minutes to do this. I'm, so I'm sorry, uh, ladies up here, that I said, okay, three minutes, two minutes. <laughs> okay, you know, uh, for some people, they're like, well, of course, you know, we've got to get this done on time. And other people are like, wait, well, you're making us do this by a certain amount of time. I haven't had enough time to think about it yet. Um, and they really um, dislike uh, things that they already know what's going on. Dull, uh, dull stuff that's, um, that's, you know, boring. Um, so... We need teachers that facilitate learning by, by doing what is called the, the learning cycle, okay? Because very few of you, and, and uh, if we had time, I'd go through and ask you, okay, so what's your secondary? Uh, what, you know, what's your second high one? But it's, it's, it, very few people will be so high in, other, in one. Usually your high are, are in two areas. Um, and they're usually areas that are next to each other. It's usually here, here, here. Do any of you, are any of you highest one and three? One and three? You're one and three? You're, oh, so two and three, yes. So two and four? Two and four? Two, three, and four for me. Are, are, are even? Two, two points out of Okay, okay. So, 
So, so this this will often you know uh, will often be true that you know you'll you'll be higher, um, but it's usually three and four. There's nothing wrong with you that you're one and three, but it might but it might be a bit conflicting um, sometimes for you because it's like. I'm asking the why and the how question at the, at the same time. Um, so what we want to do when, as we're uh, teachers is to take them through a cycle. Okay, so if you're teaching Gracelink, how many of you teach Gracelink Sabbath School? Or Sabbath School at all, okay? Teaching Gracelink, or if you're, um, if you're teaching any uh, uh, curriculums at all, we want to start with number one. We want to answer the why question. So why are we doing this? You want to open up the folder for the mind to, so they can put what you're going to put in them. So why are we going to be doing this? Then what is it? This is where in Sabbath school we talk about the Bible story, okay, or the information that they need. How? So how is this going to make a difference in their lives? How, you know, how do they do it? This is where we'll do the craft or we'll put something together uh, that will help us to reinforce the what. And then we want to ask the what if question. So what if we did this? Okay, this is the, what the fours really need. Uh, so what, what if we did um, this? Or what if this happened? And I say this is what the four needs, but it's really what we all need. Okay, some people are just stronger in that area. So we'll all learn better if we ask these questions. Why are we talking about this? What it is we're talking about? How? Are we going to do it or learn it or, or make it happen in our lives? And then what if we did um, whatever it happens to be? So connecting to the experience is what we'll do here. And then next, we will give the information. We'll, we'll, we'll introduce the concept um, there. And, and, and really, this is where we get stuck. And when I talk to Sabbath school leaders um, about, about Gracelink, a lot of them will say, ah, but it's just all this fluff. You know, we need to get into the meat. We need to talk about the Bible story. Well, you do need to talk about the Bible story, absolutely. And it needs to have a place to fit in their brains, and they need to be able to take it and do something with it. Just having the Bible story alone and being able to blurt that Bible story back out it's not as important as kids knowing the Bible story and saying, okay, so how's that going to make a difference in our lives? What if I did this? Or how could we, how could I or our family or our, our Sabbath school class do something to make a difference? Okay, so it's important, it's important to us all. Um, here's the how is where we would say, okay, so how am I going to do it? Personalizing the information. So here's the Bible story. Uh, what difference does it make uh, in my life? Like I said earlier. And then this, so, so what are we going to do with it? So you want to go through it. And where we normally, like I said, we, um, we tend to teach to our, to our style. But the other piece is we tend to teach the way we have been taught. So I have uh, parents uh, of my kids in primary who say, well, that's not what we did when I was in Sabbath school. Okay? And, um, and that is true. They, that's not what they did when they're in Sabbath school. We talked about the Bible story when we were in Sabbath school the whole time because we're really good at giving out information. Okay? Um, and we might have done a little bit about why, but we will... We're, we're not strong on, we, we want to get to the, to, the, to the meat of the thing and not do the, do the fluff. But it's not fluff. This is the place where it connects into your brain and where you personalize it and it will make a difference in your life. Okay, that makes sense? So, let's try it out. We have a little time. Here's the thing. We're, we're talking about Peter's dream of the different animals coming down in the sheet. Okay, remember that dream where Peter's being told, there, there's Gentiles, God doesn't see the difference between Jews and Gentiles, okay? So the memory verse is, God does not show favoritism, and we want the children to know that everyone is special to God, no matter who they are or what they are, look like. We want them to feel confident that God accepts me, 
and we want to res them to respond by showing God's acceptance to someone else. Okay, so we're gonna do we're gonna do four different activities, and so each one of you have uh, have an activity there. Okay, are we ready? One. We're doing it now. Okay. We're doing it. Are you ready? ready. Ones, yeah. fours. Are you ready? <laughs> are you ready for? <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> are you ready, fours? Hello. Okay. All right. What? Yeah. But we need for you to be paying attention so you get the whole thing because we've got things to tell you. Okay. So ones, start us off here now. We're wanting to learn uh, the the. Um, we're wanting for kids to learn that God does not show favoritism. Okay? So ones, lead, start us out. Okay, so does everyone have something to write with and a paper? Yes. Or does anyone need materials? We got it. Awesome, you just need a paper and a pencil. Okay. We have a paper. Yes. We have a paper. And um, you guys are going to have... We're going to have five seconds. Seconds. Five seconds. You guys are going to have 30 seconds. You guys need a partner to do this activity, and you're going to write down everything that you have in common. It can be a physical thing, and then you guys both like. Um, we're both, we both have two brothers, whatever the case may be. So you guys have 30 seconds to get with your partner and write down everything that you have in common. Ready, set, go. Okay, so how many siblings do you have? I have seven. So we both have a brother and a sister, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, I have a brother and sister. Um, where were you born? In Paraguay, South America. Oh, okay. I was born in Lincoln, Nebraska. We were both born in America. It's one in South and one in North. Um, what else? We're both teachers? Yep. Okay, yes. We both live in Georgia? Well, I don't, but I'm in Georgia. <laughs> yeah, no, but you know, I, I actually live in Nebraska. We both live in the United States, yes. I love children. Okay, I love children too. Are you married? I'm married. I'm married. Okay. How many kids? We don't have any kids. No. We're both married. Five seconds. No, we don't have any. Drop your pencils. No cheaters because this is what's happening. <laughs> so, um, and then, do you actually finish activity or? Oh, well, so just ask how many you had in, in common. Okay, so who had more than five things in common? Okay, oh. anyone have more than ten in common? We had nine. Nine? Okay, what was the most interesting thing that you guys found that you had in common? Um, and we both had three kids. <laughs> nice. Okay, how about for you? What was the most interesting thing that you found that you, what was surprised you that you had in common? Oh, um. We both migrated here. Nice. Okay. At the back, what was something that you guys had in common? The, we both love kids. <laughs> and, I, and the important thing that I found out is that Susanna has seven, seven children. Seven no, si no, siblings. 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 Five kids, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what's something that you can share that we both have in common? Well, we can share some of them. Like, we both speak another language. Oh. We both like sports. We like fruits. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And our parents come from a different country. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we have three siblings. Okay. Neat. So then, Bible Connection. Okay. <laughs> Bible Connection. Excellent. Give them a hand. Okay, so we're going to move to the story here. Hello, my name is Peter, and I just had the most interesting dream. What did you dream, Peter? So I dreamt. I was sitting there, and, and I was laying there, and there was this big sheet that dropped out of the sky with a, oh, open your mouth, Peter, with a lot of different animals. What were those animals, Peter? Well, some of them were clean animals that we can eat, and others were not clean. I don't know what they were doing with them. Well... You know... Jewish animals, Jewish clean animals do not stay with non-clean animals. But didn't God create all of them? Well, that's what Jesus told me in this dream, is that he loved 
all the animals, the clean and the unclean. He loved the Jews and the Gentiles and that I need to like people who are different. That's what Jesus says. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, let's go to this group. Okay, so we need all your help for ours then. Do we just stand up? Oh, no, no, not yet. Okay, so here's a picture. We're all um, a classroom. Um, she's a new student. She migrated here. And, of course, you know, she's shy, doesn't want to talk. We're all together because we're all comfortable with each other. And I'm going to choose to break out of the mold and make friends. And, yeah, so we're all talking about it. Oh, hey, how, was your, how was your day? Are you having a good time? Do you have a good weekend? Oh yeah, it was good. So, it was so, so, so what sporting event did you watch this weekend? Um, I haven't watched anything yet, but I have a baseball game tonight. <laughs> okay, very good. That's exciting. Yeah. Oh, Excellent. All right. All right. Well, okay. Bring us to the end here. So the game is we have to keep the balloon off the floor. They can't touch the floor. Keep them off. Keep them off. Oh! 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 So the idea is while all the balloons are different shapes and different colors, they're all still valuable and can get the job done and can be fun. So we can keep them all up in the air and just like it didn't matter what color you got, you were still bound them up yeah. or what shape, the same way that God can use us yeah. to do what he wants to do with us. It was <laughs> all right, that is excellent. So we've been share, pairing and sharing uh, together. So um, we're, we're done here now with Learning Styles. Thank you all for being involved and happy learning and teaching. Um, so have, have a great time. And I do have some handouts for those of you that are collecting handouts up here. So just uh, stop by and pick them up. So thank you very much. Let's have a word of prayer before I send you off. Heavenly Father, thank you for the good time we've had together. I ask that you be with each person here as they go out back to their churches that they can learn, uh, have learned something that they can put into, um, into use to help to connect kids in our churches and our communities with Jesus Christ. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks, everyone.